What is going on, everybody? It is January 1st, 2018, New Year's Day. Happy New Year to everybody. I hope everyone had a uh, safe and successful New Year's Day or New Year's Eve. Um, I was in bed at like, I don't know, 10 and change. Um, pretty easy night. So, feeling raring to go on this first day of 2018. First and foremost, thanks to everybody that's been supporting me over the past, you know, two months or so of this little journey that we're on. Really enjoying what I'm doing, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. And I have you guys to thank. Uh, I never thought that I would get like 2,400 views on a video. I know that's like a small amount of views to compared to some videos on YouTube, but. You know, I figured if I can get like 100 or 200 people to watch this, this could be pretty fun. And it has just been phenomenal. So thank you to every single person that watches this stuff. Um, thank you to all the patrons, people from uh, people doing super chat stuff during the live streams. I'm just, I'm very, very thankful for all of it. But enough uh, butt kissing from me. We've got four games tonight. Um, not the most eventful slate. Two 7.30 starts, so at least we get the extra half hour. Um, but two games at 7.30, two games at 8 o'clock. Um, nothing too crazy. The two 8 o'clock games don't have a line yet. Um, based on whatever I'm seeing, it's basically going to be the Timberwolves with a high total. The other three, not so much. Um, but let's just dive into it. First game up is uh, Brooklyn hosting the Orlando Magic. The Nets have a 110.25 implied total, which is third on the night as of right now. Right off the bat, I have a lot of interest in Rondé Hollis Jefferson. I have a lot of interest in probably Karis LeVert, but maybe a lot isn't the right word. Um, not really digging Crab or Damari Carroll. I think Levert and Hollis Jefferson are my two main takeaways here, and then we'll see based on pricing. So Hollis Jefferson is 7,400 on FanDuel, 6,300 on DK. This has been the case for a, a little bit now where he's got a, a pretty huge gap in price on both sites compared to others. Um, he needs, I'll say, 37 to hit value. Three straight games above 30. Five of his last six have been above 30. He's hit value in three of those six. So um, I definitely like Rondé Hollis Jefferson. And then Levert was my other one. Levert is 5,800 on FanDuel, 57 on DK, which I don't love. So. How often does he get over 30? Three straight games over, well over 30. Um, I'm going to hope that that stays alive today. Now, anybody else? I don't think so. Crab has a decent price on DK, 4200 But... He hasn't had the sort of big game upside that I would expect for someone to just bomb threes. Dinwiddie, 6,700 on FanDuel, 6,200 on DK. Um, I don't love it. What does he need? You get to 35. He's only done it once in his last big chunk of games. You know, his, his price isn't the best. It's not really like a great shooting matchup for him. So I'm going to stick with just those two. Now we'll head to Orlando. Uh, the Magic, 108.25 implied total, which is fourth on the night. All right. 
Alrighty, so we're gonna really like Alfred Payton. I really like Jonathan Simmons. Well, man, how is Brooklyn limiting so many shots at the rim with that team? We'll, we'll take a look at Payton. We'll take a look at Simmons. Um, not totally feeling Aaron Gordon. I will take a peek at Fournier, but I don't like that either. Surprise, surprise. Alrighty, uh, Gordon, 7,900 on both sites, so he would need, you know, mid 40s. Clearly, he can get there, but I don't think this is the spot for him. Now, Alfred Payton, 8,000 on FanDuel, 7,100 on DK. He had back-to-back uh, -back games of value here. A little quiet one on the 30th. Um, but I like this matchup for him. And especially on DK, that's 7,900, or with the 7,100 price. Simmons is 6,100 on both sites. So, let's see, mid-30s for him. Back-to-back 29-point -back games. Um, I'm okay with it. And I don't tend to like Jonathan Simmons all that often. Fournier. 6,100 on FanDuel, 5,900 on DK. Can he get to low 30s? Done it in the last two. This isn't totally like a great game for him. They really do limit the amount of threes that can be taken. That's going to be it for me, just those two. So next up is uh, the Raptors hosting the Bucks. 110.5 implied total, which is second on the night. See what we got here. So, whoa, that's interesting. It's always just usually pretty clearly either a Demar game or a Kyle Lowry game, because Demar uh, lives in the mid range, sixty one percent of his shots in the mid range, compared to Lowry seventeen, and then it's the reverse for threes. So Lowry shoots sixty percent threes, DeRozan shoots thirteen. It's rare that you have a team that, like, sort of knocks down both of those things. But the Bucks kind of limit threes and limit those mid-range shots. They're just terrible at the rim. So this is m it's much more of a Lowry game than a DeRozan, or than a DeRozan game. You can see here um, DeRozan's mid-range game should be relatively limited. It, that might make him shoot more threes, which would be interesting because he's not very good at it. Um, but I don't think that I want to be anywhere near DeMar. I think Kyle is, although his price is kind of advantageous. I don't really like anybody on this team right off the bat which is kind of interesting for where their total is. So, DeMar is 8,100 on FanDuel, 7,700 on DK. He needs north of 40 for value. He's only done that once in his last seven. I don't, I don't like it. Lowry 7700, 7400 on DK. He also needs to be at 40. He's done it twice in the last 7. 38.8 is knocking on the door. I 
I just, I don't really, I, this is just a bad look for DeMar. Kyle's been playing reduced minutes, like not like reduced, reduced, but three less than DeMar is a lot. I'm going to bet on Kyle tonight. I don't totally love it. Um, but I think I need to fade DeMar. I don't think Surge is really in play. I don't think Jonas is in play. Man, I don't... This is bumming me out. I'm, there's just nothing there to like. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't see it. To the Bucks we go. Milwaukee, 104.5 implied total, which would be fifth on the night. I was really hoping that I would just love a lot of tonight's slate and just get started in 2018 on like a high note, but I'm starting to think this isn't the night for me. Okay. Totally cool with Giannis. I'm okay with Bledsoe. I don't really have much interest in Middleton. Brogdon's minutes are down a couple, which is scary. I'll take a peek at Henson. Alrighty, Giannis, 10-9 on FanDuel, 11 on DK. Has not been playing uh, particularly well from a fantasy perspective. You can see his price is starting to go down on FanDuel. He needs like 55 plus. He hasn't been there since like two weeks ago. What's Giannis's... Uh, History versus Toronto. He's never had that really transcendent game. Like even, I mean, obviously thirteen or thirty-four, nine and three is great, but he's never had like a crazy game. But he's always been relatively decent. So I am going to load up Giannis here. I'm not terribly fond of Middleton. Bledsoe, 6,900 Fanduel, 7,000 DK. 35 plus for Bledsoe. Quiet game in the last one, but he was there in the two previous, plus a 56 pointer before that. I will definitely have some Bledsoe. I'm not trusting Brogdon. Henson, 5,300 on FanDuel, 4,500 on DK. Can he get to 25 plus? Did 40 in the last time out. Three straight games above 20. Um, what does Henson do? Obviously block shots eh, on steals. Not a crazy good rebounder. Doesn't foul, or no, he fouls a lot, which I don't really love. It's sort of a reverse way to get to DeRozan if you really want to talk yourself into it. Okay, I'm going to skip on Henson. Go to the next game. Bulls hosting the Blazers. Uh, no line for this as of this point, but I have the Blazers as a slight favorite in Chicago, uh, and this is assuming that uh, that Dame plays. If he doesn't play, uh, please remember to actually add Napier to your player pool and not just talk about it. All righty. Definitely want to look at Chris Dunn. Um, I feel like I don't want to have much of Justin Holiday, although I love his price. 
Chris Dunn for sure, and then we'll see where it happens. 8,100 on FanDuel, 7,200 on DK. Dunn needs to get to 40 for me to be happy. Did it in the last time out. Been around that area. Um, you know, Portland not exactly known for guard defense, so sign me up for Chris Dunn. I'm not interested in Miritich. I'm not really interested in Markinen. I'm not particularly interested in Justin Holiday, although on FanDuel, you can make a really good case for Holiday. He needs like 25, basically. Um, so if you want to take him on FanDuel, I totally understand that. I'm not going to make that move. I don't really want to go to anybody else. Yeah, I'm good there. Now to the Blazers. Um, what I have is a 102.5 implied total, which would be 7th on the night. And like I said, I'm assuming that Dame plays. I'll take a peek at Aminu. I'll take a peek at Dame. Not really interested in CJ or Nurkic. This is a shit slate, guys. Dame, 8,900 FanDuel, 8,300 on DK. Um... You know, 45 plus we need from Dame. Hasn't played in four games. We know that he can get there. Um, if Dame's playing, I'm okay with using him. But, you know, take your chances. Nurkic, 6,300 on FanDuel. Needs 30. Yeah, I like Nurkic a lot on FanDuel. The amount of people that I like tonight is uh, tiny. Very, very tiny. Last game on the slate, uh, Timberwolves hosting the Lakers. Lakers coming off that uh, double OT crazy game. Um... Not going to have many legs. There's one thing that we're going to love on for the Lakers, but we'll get there. First up is the Timberwolves, though. 112.5 implied total if my made-up line is correct, which would be first. So we want to basically look at everybody but Wiggins. <laughs> so Towns is 9,600 on FanDuel, 9,700 on DK. So it looks like Towns' price has been corrected. Um, can he get into the 50s? Uh, there's no reason why he shouldn't. It's the Lakers. No one can guard him. Um, Towns looks exceptional for tonight. Jimmy Butler, 9,300 on FanDuel, 8,700 on DK. Also, would like to see him get to around 50, 48, 50, 45, 45. Yeah, I'm in for Butler. Taj is 61 and 57. That's Probably a little higher than I would like to go. Although he's obviously a relatively safe play. Um, um, that's not going to be the spot where I go crazy for him. Tyus is 6,400 on FanDuel, 5,600 on DK. So we need him to get north of 30. 
He did it one of the two games without Teague so far, but this might be the last chance to grab him with any sort of value in his number. I like him a lot more on DK. But, you know, if he's playing against Josh Hart or Tyler Ennis, like, it's, it's a better matchup for him now than going against uh, Jeff Teague. I don't want anything else from that game, particularly Wiggins. And finally, we go to the Lakers. This will be the fun one. Um, Lakers 103.5 implied total, which would be sixth. And I noticed it when I loaded up all the data, but Julius Randle is uh, going to be in just about every one of my lineups. Besides Ingram, no one stands out as a clear negative. So Kuzma is 6,700 FanDuel, 6,900 DK. He needs to get to like mid to high 30s. Got to 38 last night in 43 minutes. But I see no reason why Kuzma can't get to where he needs to be. Although, who does Jimmy Butler guard? Might be Kuzma, right? I don't know. I uh, definitely don't want Jordan Clarkson, although it wouldn't shock me if he went ham, but price is a little too high. Uh, Ingram's price is a little higher than what I would like, and the matchup isn't necessarily the best for him. Actually, Butler will probably guard Ingram. Anyway, Julius Randle, 6,200 on FanDuel, 5,000 on DK. If you don't have a ton of Julius Randle tonight, you are doing something wrong. I have him projected for 32.5. To hit 6x on DK, he would only need 30. So I'm projecting him for more than 6x. That shit never happens. Never, 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 unless there's really weird injury news for like $3,000 guys. To be able to get Julius Randle at 5000 is bonkers. Absolutely 100% bonkers. I mean, he's projected for 5x on FanDuel. It's it's not like a site-specific thing. I'm just saying you got to have him, and you got to have him in droves. Um, I wouldn't, I can't imagine not having him in 80% of my lineups tonight. Josh Hart. Uh, 4,400 on FanDuel, 4,800 on DK. So he needs to get to mid-20s. Uh, did it last night in 37 minutes, clearly. Um, but can get to the mid-20s. Is going to get the minute. should get the minutes. I'm fine with Josh Hart. And that's it. Although, uh, I guess... <sighs> Tyler Ennis... Played 45 minutes last night. I mean, if you're confident that he's going to get minutes again tonight, I think that uh, having a couple bullets of him in a GPP is fine. Minimum salary on both sites. But yeah, that's it. That's the short list. It's uh, pretty tiny. I'm going to assume what I missed a position. A lot of point guards. Only two power forwards on FanDuel. But I like it. Plug this into um, the optimizer. We'll see what we we get spitting out here. And then I will let you guys go. Because I am going to go watch Liverpool in 45 minutes and start my year off in the best way possible. With, with a Liverpool win is, is what I'm saying. So, any Burnley fan, I think we played Burnley. All right. Burnley. So, any Burnley fans watching this can suck it. But, please uh, continue to like and subscribe and potentially check out my Patreon. I'm such a shill. <laughs> Alright, first line, first optimization for DK in 2018. I'm excited. You guys should be excited. 80% DeMar I could do without. 
I do like Peyton. Obviously, Randall is going to be in 100% of those. A lot of Rondé Hollis Jefferson. Randall Hollis Jefferson will probably be my, like, in, in everything for me. I don't like DeMar. I don't like Wiggins. I don't like Middleton. So that's interesting. Um, I don't... That makes me uncomfortable. I mean... This lineup here is awesome. If I can find a way to get out of DeMar and into something else. So, like, I like Peyton. I like Levert. I like Ronnie Hollis Jefferson. I like Randall. I liked Simmons. I didn't like Holiday. And I'm cool with Kuzma. So, let's just see what that gets to. Because I could probably find one that's pretty close. So, let's just squash DeMar right out of the gate and then we'll look. So that would be Wiggins and Middleton, no. Towns and Ennis, I'd be cool with this. Uh, no, I don't want Middleton. No Wiggins. Butler and Crab, I would entertain. Tyus and Dunn, I like a lot. So that, that's a good one too. Peyton, Tyus, Simmons, Rondé Hollis Jefferson. He needs a nickname. Does he have a nickname? He's from Chester. I don't know that. Um, nicknames? Nothing? Dude, get yourself a nickname. Where was I? So, yeah, I like that. Peyton Jones... Simmons, Rondé Hollis Jefferson, Randall, Dunn, Levert, Kuzma is a dope lineup. Makes for a really good placeholder at the very least. <laughs> now we'll head to uh, FanDuel and see what spits out there. Hopefully something similar. Happy New Year to you too. Apple Watch. Okay, so five percent. Ten lineups. Pow. What do we got? Ooh, I like Dame. I like Peyton. Okay. Oh Jesus, that's a lot of Milwaukee. A lot of Kuzma, a lot of Bledsoe, a lot of Markinen. Okay, I don't want Middleton. I don't want Damar. Don't want Markinen. Now what? That looks okay ish. I want Fournier though. Dame, Peyton, Levert, Holiday. A lot of that is okay. Uh, I don't know. FanDuel looks difficult. Let's find one that I can say looks okay. I like most of that. Peyton, Bledsoe, McCollum. No, I don't like McCollum. What am I saying? Yeah, pay, I mean, uh, no. What do we got here? Bledsoe, Jones, Levert, Hart, Giannis, Damari Carroll, Rondé Hollis Jefferson, Kuzma, and Randall. I think you can get to something pretty entertaining there. If you do Randall, and Rondé Hollis Jefferson, Kuzma, Alfred Payton, Josh Hart, what, what comes up there? Payton, Levert, no, I don't like any of that. It's, it's all that second small forward spot. Surprise, surprise. Probably so Simmons, Butler, and Giannis. Is Butler coming up anywhere here? 
There we go. Lowry, Tyus Jones, Levert, Hart, Butler, Simmons, Rondé Hollis, Jefferson, Kuzma, Randall. There's a decent placeholder for you on FanDuel. So that's it. Um, the new year is upon us, and we are just going to grind hard at NBA for the next, what, three and a half months until playoff time? It's going to be fun. Um, you know, you guys know the drill. Like, subscribe, uh, follow me on Twitter. I'm going to try to be uh, more active on Twitter with just, like, thoughts and news and stuff. So follow me there. Um, you know, check out Patreon if you're feeling uh, generous and think that I'm doing an okay job. That's it. Um, no live before lock tonight. Four games late. Nobody cares. New Year's Day. Um, but tomorrow, live before lock. What's the schedule look like? I'll let you know what we're doing tomorrow. I uh, probably should have just used my computer. One, two, three. So five games slate tomorrow. We will do live before lock starting at 6 o'clock tomorrow. But until then, uh, good luck tonight, guys. Enjoy the first day of your new year, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.